Hi guys, my name is Dong. I'm a Canadian animator working in Japan. Many of you have asked me questions and today I would like to answer them. So a viewer asks, how did you get the chance to work in Japan? And for me, I had always wanted to work in Japan. So once I had my Canadian affairs in order, I came here on a tourist visa, I studied the language, and I looked for work by sending my portfolio out to the multiple studios in the area. My journey is no different from my Japanese co-workers that sit next to me. So a viewer asks, I heard that if you're an animator in Japan, you only make around 300 to 400 USD monthly. Is this true? That seems low. So that low monthly wage is mainly for animators starting in industry doing cleanup and in-between, aka doga. I personally started higher up the chain by doing key animation and I am salaried. I make around 30 to 40k USD annually. That amount is not high compared to the West, but you are not starved, especially with Japan's lower cost of living. If I were to continue my career in Canada, I would obviously make multiple times more, but each to their own. A viewer asks, I want to come to Japan and try to find work. How much Japanese should I know before applying for work here? So I mentioned this subject in my finding work in Japan video and the answer is that it depends on the studio. Some studios will provide you translators, but the majority of studios will not. So you will need to have conversational level Japanese. So that means you are able to talk to a Japanese person and make yourself be understood. In terms of reading and writing, I recommend you pass the Japanese language proficiency test N2. A viewer asks, I want to try and get a job in Japan, but I don't know if I'm good enough. First of all, you don't need to be a big superstar animator to find work here. I was very middle of the pack when I first started and you can chart the progress of my art and my improvement throughout this channel by looking at my old videos. A viewer asks, if I were to move in the future after I learned proper Japanese, where in Japan is best for anime jobs? Or should I email a company first before moving? So 80 to 90% of anime jobs in Japan are located in the western Tokyo areas of Suginami, Nerima, and Nitaka. So move there if you're looking for anime jobs. For the second part of your question, while I do hear stories about foreign animators who apply overseas before moving to Japan, those cases are extremely rare and if you want a higher chance of finding work, I recommend you do it the old-fashioned way by coming here first. A viewer asks, how long does it typically take to put up one episode of an anime? So this varies production to production based on the budget and the amount of staff working on that show. So for example, on Decadence, once we were out of pre-production, it took about a year and a half to finish all 12 episodes. So you do the math. A viewer asks, is anime lip syncing easier? And is there a reason to why the lip sync here is more limited compared to Western mouth animation? Yes, there are less mouth shapes in Japanese animation and they are generally spaced on threes instead of twos like in the West, meaning there are just less drawings overall. This is done because it is easier and is less effort and to a lot of Japanese people, super accurate lip syncing is not that important. A viewer asks, I have a question about effects. Bloom, lens flare, explosions, etc. How are they approached on shows? So effects are generally done either by the animator by drawing them frame by frame like any other scene or by generating them via 2D or 3D compositing software. Which method used is based on the director's discretion and is also influenced by the budget of the show and other factors. A viewer writes, I have experience with 3D and if for some reason I can't draw the backgrounds well, can I make a layout with 3D background created by me and the characters in 2D for my portfolio? Well, since Japanese animators are both layout artists and animators, it is pretty important to be able to draw 2D layout and backgrounds for your characters. Since you already know 3D, you already have a leg up when trying to learn how to do layouts. So 
I think taking the time to learn how to draw 2D layouts and backgrounds shouldn't be as hard as you think. A viewer writes, I'm curious as to why you need to think about the line weight when drawing since the digitalized drawings will always have uniform lines. That's a good question, but not all scenes in all anime will have uniform lines. There still exist shows where the cleanup is done by hand and then scanned. And there are special cuts in certain anime where the lines are emphasized. And I think it's just a good habit to have. A viewer asks, You've shown a lot of videos animated in OpenTunes. Does the animation software matter in anime? So I like OpenTunes because it's a good software and it's free. I have also been using Clip Studio Paint recently. But overall, you can use whatever software you want since the drawings are exported into JPEGs anyways. A viewer says, I came from an art school where they say, don't draw anime, it doesn't help you. Since you're from a non-anime school like Sheridan, how do you transition from Western animation into anime? Well, I know that many Western art professors don't want you to draw in the anime art style because when beginners do it, they often end up with something that feels amateurish and lacks fundamentals. But once you do learn those fundamentals of drawing, such as form and structure, it is quite easy to transition into a different art style. For me personally, I only started drawing in the anime art style in my fourth year at university. A viewer writes, I want to work in the anime industry for greater artistic mastery. Is it possible to have a full-time job and work freelance? Yes, there are people who work full-time in a Western studio while freelancing for a Japanese anime. They do this because they can live off their Western salary much easier. Obviously, you need very good time management skills, but since you are paid by the scene, it is possible to request more time for your work as the studios will often work with you to help you do your work. A viewer asks, while looking for work, does my bachelor's degree have to be related to animation? What if it's in film or television? So while yes, you do need a bachelor's degree to get a working visa in Japan, that degree is mainly just for the immigration office. When you're looking for work here, the studios will look at your education history, but it is mostly a meritocracy. So do not worry if your degree is not in animation. A viewer writes, I'm 26 and headed back to school to study art and animation. I'll likely be 29 by the time I'm ready for the industry. Do you think my age is something that will work against me trying to animate in Japan? No, I don't think age matters. There are many superstar animators and directors who started their careers late in their late 20s and 30s. So you'll do just fine. A viewer asks, do you actually watch the anime you work on? So I'm the type of person who likes making anime more than watching it. So usually when I'm only on for a single episode, no. But if the show is good, I'll give it a watch sometimes. Recently I watched Sunny Boy, a show I had a little part on and I thought it was great. So a viewer writes, I love to hear your experience on the transition of moving to Japan getting adjusted to the new culture, and if there's anything you would do differently now. Moving and settling in Japan was a journey. At the time, I only had a limited amount of funds and I had to find work fast. So I came here on a tourist visa, I settled in and I started speaking to locals to try and get my conversation ability up. I managed to find work the old fashioned way and now I pretty much live here as if it's my second home. There were many instances of culture shock. So during one of my first interviews, I had walked into the studio with my casual clothes, shorts, and t-shirts, while all the other applicants had full suits on. And even now, there's still many parts of the culture that still shocks me. But would I ever do anything different? No, I don't think so. All these experiences that I had makes me who I am. And looks like we're just out of time. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope to do one of these again sometime. I want to give a big shout out to the supporters of the channel on Patreon. You guys make things happen. And if you'd like to support the channel, links are down below. 
supporters get to see some unique behind the scenes stuff from your favorite anime. Otherwise, I would like to shout out my social media and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah. <laughs>